Good morning, my friends. Welcome to this episode of Healing Your Codependency. I'm Marshall Bircher, and I'm your guide in helping you stop fixing yourself, start loving yourself, while creating more peace, more connection, and more love in your life. So that's what we do. I'm happy to be here with you guys again. It's been a busy week. We're getting ready for some big transitions here in my company. We're moving into a membership system next month, moving to a new learning system, new offerings are coming so we're gonna have some excitement later in the month and in april so keep an eye out for that today we're going to talk about the (laughs) talk about the rush to fix or the rush to forgive is a rush to fix this is something that i've wrestled with a lot in my own journey especially with um, cultural and religious indoctrination about forgiveness and why it's absolutely thing we have to do right now and things like that so we're going to talk about why this is a rush to fix and what we do instead so that we can properly orient ourselves around the concept of forgiveness and get in touch with our own lived experience respect and value our own reality so that's what we're going to be exploring today before i do that i'm going to get this shared out to the community real quick the communities where you can find additional tools guidance and support and your journey in healing codependency the link is above on facebook below on youtube and on my front page if you're listening via podcast. Now, if you're listening via podcast, thank you. You guys have helped me succeed quite a bit in this. I appreciate it. And then if you're watching via uh, via YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button, and come check us out on YouTube. So there we go. Okay. So the rush to forgive is the rush to fix. A lot of times we are impressed upon or we are guided to forgive the person who hurt us or harmed us very quickly we are taught a lot of times that that is a necessary step in our healing that we must forgive and that forgiveness is going to take away kind of like this pain we carry about what we've lived through a lot of times many times this is done prematurely this is done very early on in the experience for the person who is victimized and impacted by the other person's behavior it's done frequently to in response to the other person's emotions about being accountable so in my experience forgiveness was imposed because the other person felt guilty and wanted to be free of their guilt they didn't actually express a lived um, empathy towards the, the impact they had on me. They didn't conceptualize and take time to understand that the experience I may have had in response to their emotion, to their behaviors. Instead, they're feeling an intense sense of shame or guilt, or they feel this need to get right with their deity so that they can go on and feel worthy and feel justified in themselves. It wasn't actually about me about my lived experience or about care about me so for me forgiveness has become a process of caring it's being process of of understanding the lived experience another person has had due to my behaviors and then um, discussing with them what they need in order to feel safer what matters to them in this so that they can find peace in the impact i created so in other words I am going to work towards some aspect of reconciliation, at least minimum ownership or accountability, and, and care for the impact. Right Now, if forgiveness comes out of that or not, I'm not concerned about that. I'm more concerned about, hey, I see how this impacted you. This matters to me. You matter to me, and I want to I want to see what you need here and be with you in, in the experience I created. If that's something they want. I mean, in my own personal experience, especially with traumatic behaviors from other individuals, that's not something I want. I want my own space. I want my own safety. I want my own care from other safe people before I engage again with the person who did the the behavior that was harmful to me. So my experience, as well as with with uh, the pressure to forgive, I also was taught that if I don't forgive, I'm bad, I'm wrong, I'm shameful. And I'm going to get punished for it. 
I'm going to get a withdrawal of love, a withdrawal of approval. There is going to be a consequence if I don't forgive. And this taught me the rush to forgive was really more about fixing things than it was about actually moving through a reconciliation process and restoring a sense of safety and trust and connection uh, with that person owning themselves and sharing the impact of it and there being empathy as the bridge between my, the, my experience of their impact and their intention. That was the key there. So this rush to forgive is really about, hey, if I feel this big impulse to forgive them, I am trying to regulate them. I'm trying to avoid a larger consequence. I'm trying to maybe help them feel better about themselves so that maybe they'll stop doing the thing to me. Maybe it comes from an idea of, hey, I love you. I'm going to show you that I love you by forgiving you, and maybe you won't do this again. So it's kind of a, a grace that we're giving the individual at that point, even though they've not actually expressed I, and a depth or an understanding about what they did and how it impacted us. Because I, I think that really matters in this process is that, yes, I'm more than willing to give uh, grace and understanding to an individual. I give it to myself all the time. But it really doesn't feel safe if they've not expressed a clear understanding about what they did and the impact. So if someone comes to me and says, um, I'm just sorry for whatever I did that upset you. I'm <laughs> going to be very, very wary about going, well, I, I don't know that this is going to work for me because you're not, you haven't taken the time to center yourself in my experience and understand, or at least try to understand what I went through in regards to what you did or didn't do, that kind of thing. But if they come to me and are like, you know, Marshall, I was thinking about what I did, and I'm really sorry. I know... I imagine it was scary. I imagine it was confusing. I imagine it it might have you know delayed your day or derailed something for you. I could I could see how it would be upsetting, how it would hurt. That's where I'm like, yeah, thank you. I can see that. I can understand. I appreciate this because now we're I'm being seen. I'm being valued by this other person, and that brings a sense of safety and a sense of connection back into the picture that was damaged, that was harmed with their previous behavior. That's a place where, for me, forgiveness becomes a really rational option. It's like, yeah, I'll forgive you for that because you understand what you did and you're not going to do it again. And if we do, we're going to have to work that through. That's what I'm talking about as real forgiveness is this enjoyment back into an emotional clarity and connection that's based on them working to understand our lived experience. Now, vice versa, if I've harmed or hurt someone, it's me understanding their lived experience, reaching out to them, connecting with that. But it's not this idea of like, you must forgive or you're never going to get over those feelings you hold. No, that's not actually true. There's things that I have not forgiven. I'm not sure that I will get there. I might. I don't try to get there. There are things that I thought I would never forgive that I have because I gave myself the time and space to go through my own emotional experience. Rather than rushing to forgive them so I can fix my relationship with them so I don't have to get punished again or so that I can have closeness with them or something like that. Instead, I took my time. And here's what I teach my students to do and here's what I do in my world. Instead of forgiving, I take time to prioritize my experience first, my emotions, the impact I live with because of their choices and actions, and what I need instead. I take time to allow that to be felt, to be understood, to be cared for, to be valid, to be treated as real and important, and allow that to, to give it the space. Really, it's the somatic work kind of has no verbiage to it sometimes. But it's like I give all of my experience this warmth, this care, this understanding, and allow it to take up more of my time and attention until I start finding a place of peace and clarity with it. Kind of a rest enters the space. It's like, yeah, okay, I'm feeling more 
directed more at centered in this experience now and i find a natural impulse to move forward or move beyond it and that's where i can in, inquire into myself hey what about um they've asked for forgiveness what well, what do i think about that how do i feel about this option of forgiving them or this request and then it's going to come down to how they approach that and what they've shared and whether or not i feel safe forgiving them see no one's entitled to forgiveness that's the thing that's not something they deserve because they said sorry it's something that we grant based on what matters to us and what uh, feels safest and most appropriate for us now forgiveness also doesn't entail re-engagement in the relationship it doesn't entail more proximity it doesn't re entail something going back to normal either we have a right to go hey yeah i'm I, I release you of this debt. I, I release you. I give you grace for what you've done. I understand your feelings about it, and I appreciate that, and I don't want to re-engage. I don't want to go forward with this any further. That's fully reasonable, too. So when it comes to the rush to forgive, slow down. Take time to connect with your emotional experience to validate that, to legitimize it. Let yourself acknowledge what you're really feeling and what it, the cost has been for you. Let that be real for you. If you're in a discussion with someone that's seeking forgiveness, you can share it. Like, hey, do you understand that it meant this to me? Did it have this impact on me? That this is what I live with because of the choices and actions you made, person A? Because sometimes they don't. And sometimes with that information, they become more aware and they can actually dig a little deeper in their own experience, a little more empathy, a little more insight on their part into their own, into their own behaviors. I mean, I'm speaking from a lot of experience in doing the repairing side of this, being the one that screwed up. And usually when I screw up, I don't go in seeking forgiveness. I go in going, yep, I, I screwed up here. And I am sorry for this impact. I imagine it was this. I could see this. I could see that. And we have a discussion. But I don't seek forgiveness. I seek to create understanding and a hope that, hey, I understood what I did and how it impacted you. And I, am, I won't do it again. I will do it differently. So you can create actual repair or at least understanding that leads to some peace for them so they can move on in their world. But yeah. When we are impacted by someone and it hurts and they violated a boundary or they've breached an agreement or they have harmed us in some way, we need to take a lot of time to validate our emotions, to be with them, to treat them as real and valid, to acknowledge them and legitimize them so that they are here with us. Because rushing to forgive is an emotional bypass. We're ignoring our lived experience. We're ignoring the information that's giving us. And it's not allowing us to ally with ourselves. Instead, we're, we're moving to please the other person. We're moving to regulate them. We're, we're moving to try to create a false sense of peace because there's no conflict. Instead, there's, I mean, there's this thing about peace that's a little tricky. Just because there's no conflict doesn't mean there's peace. <laughs> Real peace means there's rest in the body. There's rest in the environment. There's no tension in the environment in the body of those involved. There's a harmony there. So it's something that exists. It takes up space rather than it being the lack of conflict. And so that rush to forgive is a rush to get towards some sort of non-conflict state. It also means we have a low tolerance for discomfort, the discomfort of their experience, the discomfort of being in conflict or tension with someone. And that's something we have to build capacity for so that we can move through these proper healthy steps for ourselves, and maintain our boundaries, maintain our autonomies, and care for ourselves because we have the right to stand up for and express our emotions, communicate our emotions in a way that is clear, succinct, and kind. Like, hey, this stops, this hurts, this keeps going, I'm going to leave this situation. So we can communicate our boundaries very directly and very clearly. We can be centered in our own value, our own worth, rather than bypassing that to try to please or regulate this person 
that we are having a conflict with and having pain with, right? So we slow down, we pause, we acknowledge and observe our emotions. We legitimize them. And then we inquire as to what we need right now in the situation. So it's not, oh, I'm going to inquire if I need to forgive them or not. It's more like, I'm going to inquire what I need. Do I need a boundary? Do I need time? Do I need space? Do I need to discuss something? What do I need from them in order to feel safe and close again or connected again? Do I want to feel safe, close, and connected again with them? So now we're way outside the realm of forgiving someone, and we're moving into the realm of orientation, what we need. We're prioritizing ourselves first, giving ourselves our own um, direction, our own care, and our own um, kind of recipe for what we're looking for. And then we go from there. Based on what those answers are, we follow them, we see what happens. Now, sometimes, a lot of times I've found when people take this approach, and well, I've taken it, forgiveness naturally emerges at some point. But sometimes it doesn't. And it's okay either way. Because forgiveness is not mandatory for your healing. It's not mandatory for moving on from the pain because you can. You can find closure with yourself, closure with the event, and move forward. And you don't have to put the person who harmed you in a priority spot. You put yourself in priority and you allow them to navigate their discomfort, their guilt, their shame, or whatever is going on for them in their yard. You get out of the way. That's their work. That's theirs to resolve, not ours. We're not responsible for relieving someone of their shame or guilt for the thing they did. Maybe they need to live in that for a little while. Maybe they need to stew in it and dig in it and go, you know, maybe I need to really look at myself and my behaviors and my priorities and my maturity and my immaturity and work that out. So that's my take on the rush to forgive is a rush to fix. It's kind of a discombobulated thing because more of this is impromptu. So, yeah, there we go. Let me know your thoughts below, guys. Let's see. Let's Pam shares. No one is entitled to forgiveness with the heart. Heart, heart. Yes. Yeah, they're not. <laughs> forgiveness is a gift I give if that makes sense to me, if that's something safe for me to give. And that can go for you too if that's something you agree with. That's the other thing here, guys. Anything I teach, anything I share... Is something you, I encourage you to come to terms with on your own, whether you agree with it or not, whether it matters to you or not, whether it's aligned with you or not. I'm not an authority. I'm not the, the supreme poobah of anything. It's more like this is my approach, this is my experience, this is what's worked for me, it's worked for other students. It hasn't worked for some of them too, you know. It's not always 100%, and that's okay too. They find their path. I encourage you to find yours. And Shani shares, thank you for this topic. Yeah, you're welcome. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, my friends. Remember, if you're watching via YouTube, hit that subscribe button. If you're listening via podcast, come join us on YouTube as well and on Facebook at the community. Pam shares, for me, forgiveness was, for me, part of letting go. Yeah. So it's, it's releasing something for you. That's cool. It's beautiful. That's the work here, my friends. Finding our way piecing together wisdom from within ourselves and others and seeing what works for us individually. That's the magic here. Go gently with yourselves, and I will see you guys in our next episode.